Good afternoon. It is five after one, and I'm going to call this city council meeting of Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. City Council representing the Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. So with that, I'm calling this meeting to order. And uh, for the flag salute, I would like to do the flag salute. So if you all stand, and also after the flag salute, a minute of silence for what has happened in U of LD and what is happening in our nation. So thank you. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you all stand for a moment, please. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Be seated. And we will go to the roll call. Chrissy, please. Council Member Downs? Present. Council Member Smotrich? Here. Council Member Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kite? Here. Mayor Townsend? Here. With that, we do have a presentation today, and I'd like to introduce from the Lifestream Blood Bank. Mr. Michael McDaniels, Director of Donor Recruitment. Hi, Michael. Hello. We'll see. Well, I'm on the screen. There we go. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael McDaniel, Director of Donor Recruitment for Livestream. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council and guests for having us. Um, we're here today to update you on the status of blood supply in the Low Desert and Inland Empire, as well as our Nine Cities Challenge coming up, with which Rancho has been so nice to compete in in the past. Lifestream is a nonprofit blood bank. We have been the nonprofit blood bank for this area for over 70 years, and we're very proud of that fact. Our mission is very simple. We help save lives by connecting donors and patients through the gift of blood. We do this with over 80 hospitals in six counties, all of the hospitals in the IE, we are, or the Low Desert rather, we are the primary supplier to. That takes over 500 donations a day. About half of that comes from our centers, which Rancho Mirage is, is uh, Lucky enough, I will say, to have one. We certainly appreciate um, all of Rancho Mirage's commitment to that center. The other half comes from about 1,600 mobile blood drives that we conduct annually. Here's a quick map of our centers, and you can see uh, there um, the red pen uh, representing Rancho Mirage. We have two more that are opening later this year um, in Hemet and then in Beaumont. We are still in an ongoing critical blood shortage. You probably heard a lot in January when the American Red Cross for the first time in its history declared a national blood crisis. That PR helped every blood bank around the nation, there's no doubt. All of our donations went up. However, they've all since fallen back down. We are now less than two days supply um, for all of the low desert and the IE, which we consider critical. I do wanna call your attention to two blood types that you're probably familiar with though, which is O positive and O negative. Both of those right now have less than half a day's supply. So if you can hear my voice and you are those blood types, I really ask that you visit a center or go to our website, um, lstream.org, and make an appointment at one of our open to public uh, mobile drives. Those two blood types are important because O positive is used in trauma. So if you're a victim of gunshot wounds or car accidents, and you mentioned the violence earlier, um, you're going to be infused with O positive blood. They don't have time to find out your blood type. If you are a birthing mother or an infant, and this is what's really scary, it's O negative. We have less than 50 units of that on our shelf right now. Um, so we have over 100 orders for that blood type that we cannot fill right now. Um, so again, if you're that blood type, please, please make an appointment. Um, an estimated 37% of the population can donate. Certainly less than 10% of the population actually does. Um, we hear from high school students that I actually heard the other day, well, don't they make it in a lab? 
no, we do not make blood in a lab. Nobody has artificial blood. It has to come from donors. And donors support somebody like you see here, which is five-month-old Paisley. Her open heart transplant took 41 pints of blood. That's 41 different people coming together to save her life. How much blood is needed? Every two seconds, someone in the United States needs, States needs blood. One in seven people walking into a hospital are going to need it. And this is the scary statistic. One in two women and one in three men will develop cancer in their lifetime. If you're gonna fight cancer with chemo and radiation, you will have to be replenished with platelets and red blood cells. Platelets is gonna be about eight units a week for cancer treatment. A bypass is about five units. The big users, auto accidents and gunshot wounds. You mentioned the violence earlier. And uh, my hometown is Tulsa, Oklahoma, which just experienced, unfortunately, a mass shooting there um, at a hospital. So um, a lot of blood being used across the nation. Liver transplant is up to 100 units. We average one liver transplant per day in the low desert and, in and inland empire, and I am including weekends. So that is over 36,000 units of blood a year just for that procedure. Um, brain surgery can be 10 units, and then a fractured hip or joint about five units. Some myths to dispel about blood donation. It's painful. It's no more painful than a shot. Um, it, it doesn't take that long. It's about a 20 minute draw. It's not that uncomfortable. Uh, another one, it can make you gain weight. The, the opposite is true. You actually burn a little more calories replenishing uh, what you've donated. Um, if you have a tattoo, you can absolutely donate. If it's from a licensed tattoo parlor and it's healed, you are free to donate. If it's not, even we ask that you wait three months and then you can donate. Um, you can donate if you've been to the dentist. In fact, a lot of type two diabetics, um, if it's under control, can still donate blood. So I want to uh, call attention to these graphs. Um, for the last three years, we have been a net importer of blood. Our hospital usage has outpaced collections. So right now we're flying in blood once a week from Hawaii. Um, and then sometimes we are able to fly that in from other states. Our goal long term is to become a net exporter of blood. And we hope that Rancho can continue to help us with that. Rancho Mirage has been really a gem of the low desert with its with the donor center over 6,000 pints collected last year which is fantastic in fact that is almost six percent of our annual collections so we really appreciate uh, the council's support of that center as well as the citizens that continue to make appointments i want to challenge rancho mirage this year for 7,500 pints and to put that into perspective the center in rancho mirage supports three low desert hospitals JFK, Eisenhower, and Desert Regional. Their usage is about 18,000 pints a year, right? So it takes a lot of blood for this area. So what can you do? You can add it to your city's disaster preparedness plan. And we are city seeing more cities do that as we've seen some more violence in the country. Promote it at the city level. We are thankful that we have a drive coming up on the 22nd of July that the city is uh, helping us with. So we really appreciate that. Um, but of course, if you can host more, we would love it. Also go to lstream.org um, and make an appointment today. I do uh, want to mention the Nine Cities Challenge, which is in July and August. Rancho Mirage has done great in the past. Um, we are upping the ante this year. We have a Heroes Luncheon scheduled for 9-9, and we are going to be giving every city a table at that luncheon. You can choose to come as yourselves or invite your local heroes to be honored at that luncheon. Um, we certainly welcome that. Uh, we have three prizes, so the largest total, the largest drive, and the largest drive per capita. Um, we will have over $5,000 in prizes to give away this year. So we're very excited about that. And finally, to contact us, I want to introduce Jacob Pakani. Um, he is your dedicated regional account manager, and you can't miss him at nearly seven feet tall. Um, that is his information here on the screen. Um, I'm thankful that Jacob was able to join me today, and we would love to take any questions if you have them. Very good. Michael, Thank let me say that I assure you, Rancho Mirage will rise to the occasion to meet the challenge. And uh, what I want, needless to say, what would everybody be, the world be, without blood drives? And especially right here, it's a, it's a great number that you have for us and for the Coachella Valley. Yes. So thank you both. With that, I'll turn it over. I just have one question, and, and you're doing remarkable work. There's no doubt about it, and, and we treasure everyone that comes to donate. Uh, could you tell us if someone has had COVID? if that becomes a problem? That is not a problem at all. Um, in fact, we don't even require donors to wear masks. It's entirely up to them. Our staff still follows 
COVID protocols, so we wear masks and sanitize each station after use. Um, but whether you've had the vaccine or not, had COVID or not, makes no difference on blood donation. Okay, great. Yeah, as long as you're feeling well, thank you. <laughs> Very good. Any other comments from the council? As far as having a full-time location right now, are you just on appointment only? We are not. So we are accepting walk-ins. Um, and that location accounts for over 6,000 uh, units uh, that were donated last year. So the mobile blood drives in Rancho Mirage are a little bit less. We're hoping with the school district coming back in force in August that we can get some blood drives there. Um, we got word today that it looks like they're going to go ahead and allow us back in. So fingers crossed. Um, so your reference, about 40% of our donations come from people under the age of 24, um, primarily from high schools and colleges. It really is the young supporting the old in this industry. So, for the price of a year worth of ice cream, yes. I will be happy to donate blood <laughs> and win that year's worth of ice well, cream. Well, you can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Well, Ed? Yeah, what, uh, what percentage at the Rancho Mirage location are walk-ins without appointments? Off the top of my head, I would say it's less than 30%. Um, that center is highly appointed, so we usually see an appointment rate north of 50% every day. Okay. Yeah. It's going to increase. Well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> very good. Is that it? Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Again, great cause. Appreciate thank you. It. Thank you thank for you your Mike. support. Thank you. Our next on the agenda is time for non-agenda public comments, an opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. And I will turn this over to our city clerk, Chrissy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so for anyone participating remotely, if you'd like to speak, uh, you let us know by pushing star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. And the first speaker, it's uh, Tom Scaramolino and David Kaw Kawaladzik. Sorry, I know I messed that up. <laughs> I've been practicing that cool thing, so. <laughs> Mayor Townsend, Mayor Kite, Council, City Staff, guests, present today and virtually. My name is Tom Scarmolino, General Manager of the Weston Ranch Mirage since November of 2016. But today, I am here as a proud board member of the desert's best chamber of commerce, the Ranch Mirage Chamber. And today I have one request and one note of thanks. The request is an invitation to join our board mixer on June 22nd from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. at the Westin for a fun evening in our new venue, Pins and Pints. Try some duck pin bowling, take a ride on our virtual reality roller coaster, enjoy plenty of good food and good cheer. The thank you is our appreciation for your longstanding support of Taste of Summer Ranch and Mirage. This month-long event starts July 11th through August 12th. It's a great economic driver for our city enjoyed by both locals and visitors. Please visit tasteofsummerranchmirage.com for more information. And if I may, personally, the resort wishes to also extend our appreciation for your support throughout our recent renovation. The planning, building, and marketing departments were instrumental in making the process as business-friendly as possible during a very difficult time. The resort is back. We just completed the best spring season in our history. We've had over 120 groups visit the resort since January 1 and drive traffic leisure businesses off the charts. It's been a great, great start to 2022. At this time, I'd like to welcome fellow board member, David Kowalczyk. Well, thank you, Tom. Good afternoon. As uh, Tom said, my name is David Kowalczyk. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources for Eisenhower Health and a new chamber board member. The chamber continues to grow with 59 new members this year alone and 86 new members since the hire of our business development director, Annie Blaylock, last November. The growth is a combination of a great team in the board, ambassadors and staff, and a fantastic partnership with our city. Thank you for your partnership. For an update about Eisenhower Health, First of all, I'd like to thank the City Council for your overwhelming support of Eisenhower each and every day. We continue to see strong 
volumes in both inpatient and outpatient care settings, even with the high season winding down. An update on COVID. This has been a long journey over the past two years with nearly 10,000 COVID hospitalizations and over 500 deaths. This has been a tough journey, but the community and city support has been overwhelming. So thank you, as we could not have made it through without this support. While we're in a much better place today, we still have 14 COVID admitted patients today. So it's an ongoing challenge. Despite all we've been through with this pandemic, we have never lost sight on providing the best and safest patient care. Patient safety is the foundation of everything we do. Last month, we announced that Eisenhower achieved an A grade in LeapFrog's Spring Hospital Safety Survey. Eisenhower earned the only A grade in the Coachella Valley and surrounding areas. I'm proud to announce that Eisenhower has been recognized by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid with a five-star rating. Only 13% of U.S. hospitals and 9% of California hospitals have earned this achievement. I'm also happy to announce that we recently celebrated our 1,000th newborn birth in May, uh, one year after opening this new unit. We're approaching 1,200 today. In other hospital news, we're expecting to achieve level four trauma center designation in the next 90 days. And we wanna thank the city council and city manager, Isaiah Hagerman, for supporting this effort. We'll be reopening our outpatient surgery center in the Dolores Hope building in July with six new state-of-the-art OR suites. Our cardiac and vascular capital campaign is going great and we've already raised 71 million of the $200 million campaign. And we sincerely thank the city of Rancho Mirage for their two and a half million dollar donation to this campaign. As we celebrate Pride Month now in June, Eisenhower earned top performer in the Healthcare Equality Index, a survey conducted by the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. This is the eighth survey Eisenhower has participated in, and we have earned recognition each time. Thank you very much for this time to give you an update from the business community today. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have a question for yes. Eisenhower. There are satellite locations now. Do you want to talk a little bit of how many are out there and what they do? We uh, cover the valley. Good. We have uh, um, clinics from Palm Springs all the way to La Quinta. Um, with expansion um, designated for um, Indio. Um, and I've lost count, but um, I think we have something, I'm going to guess, in the area of about put you on the spot, 80 sorry. clinics. Very I'll high. verify that number, but the number is very high. Good. Do, do they take the place of people going to the ER or going to the clinics? People have asked me that. Where do, where do I go? Do I go to one of the facilities or to ER? Well, ERs are for emergencies. Um, for non-emergencies, we certainly would um, urge um, people to go to one of our urgent cares. Um, and um, of course, always be in contact with your own primary care or specialty care physician, um, if unsure. Very good, very good. And Tom, thank you for everything you do for the chamber and for your hotel, which is doing great. Thank you. Any questions, anybody? Yes. Uh, I have no questions. However, I want to congratulate you on everything you've been doing. Um, and to think that you've already birthed uh, over a thousand babies is phenomenal. I want to also congratulate you on the hard work making sure that Eisenhower became a trauma center. I know that was took a great deal of effort and uh, it was worked on by many, many people. And we're so thrilled that you've been able to achieve that and will be coming in the next couple of months. But I also wanted to encourage people to join the Circle of Stars. I am a proud member of that organization. And for those that don't know about it, please contact Eisenhower uh, because it is an amazing organization that provides funds to buy specialized equipment for Eisenhower and their surgical uh, suites and uh, provide all the equipment 
that normally would be difficult to come by. So if you're watching this or listening, please don't hesitate to join their Circle of Stars. It's a worthwhile organization, and I'm certainly proud to be uh, one of their charter members. Thank it, you. Thank you for making mention of that, and thank you for your um, generosity. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Very good. Question. Yeah. Yes. Just a personal question. My uh, wife just had knee replacement in the new orthopedic buildings. Unbelievable capabilities now with all the robotics. You just mentioned that you were going to do some additional orthopedic uh, buildings over in the Dolores Hope or... or uh, Right, we are renovating very old surgical suites um, in the Dolores Hope Building. Those were, I think, 30-year-old um, uh, OR suites for outpatient surgery, and they were simply outdated. They didn't have the room for the Da Vinci machines and all of that. So um, when we reopen that um, in July, they're going to be large and state-of-the-art. So we're very excited about that. Good. Glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Already state-of-the-art, I'm sure. We're getting there, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ted? David, thanks for being here today. Uh, Eisenhower, obviously, is extremely important to the city of Rancho Mirage. Uh, you are our single largest employer in the city of Rancho Mirage. Uh, and we share a benefit because we recognize the number of people that relocate to Rancho Mirage specifically to be near Eisenhower Health. Uh, I, for one, was quite amazed when Del Webb opened and we had people literally that relocated from another Del Webb community to Del Webb Ranch and Mirage, again, to be closer to Eisenhower Health. So we recognize the value, we recognize the importance, and uh, thank you for the dedication. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for the kind words. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Great report. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. You're welcome. Chrissy? Next speaker is Wally Melendez. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Wally Melendez. And to continue my conversation from uh, two weeks ago, this uh, is the um, the um, uh, the um, need for for a um, hydrogen uh, charging station in this area. As I mentioned before, the hydrogen charging stations are concentrated in um, Orange, which is about 100 miles from here. And, but um, <clears throat> that's one thing. Uh, considering, for example, uh, the terrible war that's going on in uh, Ukraine and how um, Russia supplies oil and gas to uh, to Europe, and how Russia, with their present evil leader Putin, it, uh, uh, um, blackmails uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Europe uh, with that need for uh, oil and gas, like for cars. So the big point I'm trying to make is that that. The, the, the FCEVs that I'm talking about are due, they're long due to replace the uh, 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 gasoline cars. <clears throat> and we and a lot of uh, the car companies are, are not taking, are not taking <coughs> this serious. Toyota makes, Toyota, Chanda, Renault, uh, make uh, uh, FCVs. I don't know of one American car company that makes any. So we need to get on that. 
So the, big, the next big point I'm trying to make is this. We here at Rancho Mirage and me, we need to start, we need to form a corporation to, 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 to uh, uh, get, to install a hydrogen uh, uh, charging station. Because we can get the cars even if we gotta go 100 miles away, but we can't charge them. So I authorize the city clerk to give uh, my telephone number and my email address to anybody that wants to contact me to start this corporation that I'm talking about. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Chrissy? I have no other speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on non-agenda public comments? Seeing none, and there is no one on Zoom raising their hand either. Very good. That'll close this, this portion, and I'll move on to council board member comments. And let me start with, how about... Um, Mr. Steve Downs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to again speak to uh, Section 31, specifically use of water for the uh, Crystal Lagoon and the public approval process for Section 31. So misinformation continues to be spread, I, and, and I think that we need uh, to constantly educate the public about development on Section mm -hmm. 31. Um, first, on the public approval process, in the form of letters to the editor in the Desert Sun and social media comments and postings, uh, it continues to suggest that the council approve this project uh, absent adequate uh, public hearings, public comment, and an environmental impact report. The fact is that copies of the approval documents are easily available on the city website and have been since late 2019 when the Planning Commission and the City Council uh, had public hearings about the uh, specific plan and the environmental impact report and accepted those documents. The public was legally noticed about the uh, Planning Commission and Council meetings and the meetings were fairly well attended. So on the screen, um, I'll show some documents about uh, those approvals. First is page one of the 160 page specific plan for section 31. The plan outlined the project, the number of homes, the Crystal Lagoon, the hotel, the beach club, and the town center. In addition to the specific plan, there are 11 appendices to that plan, uh, to the EIR, dealing with issues like uh, environment and noise and biology. Some are more than 1,000 pages long. See the uh, screen for the next page. This is page one of the traffic impact study. 1,297 pages of statistical analysis with projections for future traffic impact that the public can easily download and review instead of looking at, at social media comments and coming to uh, emotional uh, uh, d decisions about, uh, about traffic. The next is page one of the Coachella Valley Water District Water Supply Assessment and Water Supply Verification. 219 pages filled with analysis of the ability of the CVWD to supply water in the future. The short story, the public was fully noticed with an extensive set of reports and analysis on development for Section 31. Now let's focus on water. Every city of Rancho Mirage staff member and council member understands the importance of water conservation in a time of drought. We know the value of water conservation and we encourage everyone to conserve. We also understand that we must rely on the professionals at the Coachella Valley Water District. The city of Ranch Mirage does not operate a water agency. The city relies on the CVWD to determine adequacy of the water supply and supply and the supply for new development. Here's some key facts. The annual CVWD budget is about $280 million, roughly 10 times the annual budget for the city of Rancho Mirage. The CVWD uh, budget and all 350 or so of their employees are focused on assuring water delivery in both today and in the future. This next screen is a chart showing the historical and projected state of the aquifer. Most of our water supply is stored in the aquifer. Through 2009, as you can see on the chart, the aquifer had been drawn down, in some years drawn down rather dramatically. The CVWD developed a plan to verify that drawdown. And in fact, since 2009, the aquifer has been replenished in every year but one, and the CVWD projects that replenishment will continue into the future. On the next page, this is the, uh, the verification section of the uh, water report. Um, item 4.7 of the water supply verification, 
the CBWD states that this document provides verification that adequate water supply exists for the project. The city depends on that verification from the professionals at the CVWD in order to approve the environmental, environmental impact report. So regardless of the fact that we will have periodic drought in the state of California, the CVWD is growing water storage in the aquifer and believes it will continue to grow the aquifer in the future and also verifies that there is sufficient water for development on Section 31. Now let's consider water usage for the Crystal Lagoon. So this screen, the next screen uh, shows a 24-acre uh, rectangle uh, in um, uh, the land that will be Section 31. This is roughly in the location, that rectangle is roughly in the location where the Crystal Lagoon uh, will be located. So also in the upper, uh, let's see, as you're looking at it in the upper left-hand portion of your screen, uh, there's a highlighted area of four golf holes on, at Mission Hills Country Club on the Arnold Palmer course. Those four holes of golf occupy approximately 30 acres. 30 acres of land for four golf holes versus 24 acres of land for one crystal lagoon. Now water needs for the lagoon are less than about 50% of the water that is required to service a comparable area of golf course. So that 24 acres, that rectangle in the center of section 31 will use significantly less water than those four golf holes at Mission Hills Country Club. A typical, go, typical golf course occupies roughly 120 acres. It can be anywhere from about 100 on the small side to about 190 on the high side. But 120, good enough for government work. So uh, a typical 18-hole golf course is about five times the size of the lagoon. Some math, some rough math. A 24-acre lagoon will use a small fraction of the water required to irrigate a golf course maybe about 10% less, probably even less than that. Now, there are about 300 to 400 members in a typical private club, so some things to think about. One private club provides recreation and amenities and entertainment for some three to 400 members and occupies 120 acres of land. The Crystal Lagoon will provide recreation and entertainment for all of the roughly 1,700 residences to be built on Section 31, Not only that, it'll supply recreation for all for the hotel to be built. It'll supply recreation for any Rancho Mirage or Coachella Valley resident who purchases a day pass. The lagoon will also provide a draw for the restaurant, restaurants and businesses that will come to the town center. All of this recreation and economic benefit from a lagoon that will require a small fraction of the water needs of a single 18-hole golf course. The net is that it is a strong quality of life amenity, not just for the people who will live in Cotino, but for all of Rancho Mirage. And it will act as a strong economic driver for our city. The lagoon will do all of this with water that the CVWD says it can deliver and with a fraction of the water needed for other similar sized amenities. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Steve. And Steve, please keep up the good work on bringing that message forward because you know there's a lot of people out there who uh, float other theories, and the more that you do what you're doing and bring the truth out there uh, is, is wonderful. It just keeps, you have to keep doing it over and over, <laughs> all of us, and all of us will be caught in that situation and have to answer all these questions. So uh, it refreshes my mind again just to hear what a great report you have just done. So Thanks, Jeremy, keep it I appreciate up, that. Steve. Richard. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't have a uh, speech for today. Oh, Sorry. Richard. I know you on. missed those. I miss it. But I would like to just comment and say the report that we just heard from Steve Downs is probably one of the best reports that I've seen that has come out of this council or out of other reports. And Steve, you did a great job. You really dr addressed those issues and especially the lagoon issue. And I think. Uh, going forward, we can look at that report and make it uh, very useful in the public you know, domain. I, I agree, and it's put in such great words that even I can understand it. So <laughs> that is saying a lot. So listen to what he just said. So thank you, Richard. Thank you. Iris. 
Thank you. I have no comments today, but I also want to thank Steve uh, and congratulate him for bringing everybody up to date. It makes it so much easier when people ask us questions that we can say, just watch our city council meeting. There's nothing that is left out and everything is clear. Everything is on the screen. You can watch it more than once. It's supposed to show four times daily, so you will not miss anything. So thank you again for that concise, beautiful report. Uh, it's always a pleasure to hear you speak. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, Iris. Ted? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, also, Steve, uh, excellent explanation. Uh, and before I make my comments for today, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, we're very comfortable with the findings of the CBWD. The comparison is outstanding. But at the same time, the city will continue to do everything we can to encourage conservation. And so that will still be very much on our minds. Uh, and yet uh, we feel that we will do whatever is possible from a sustainability standpoint in supporting uh, the necessity to conserve. So again, Steve, thank you loads. Uh, with that said, I'd like to make my comments. Uh, about a week ago, we had coffee with the cops, a cop. This is something that takes place regularly uh, in our city. And the purpose of this event is for the community to be able to get together uh, with the law enforcement uh, people that are assigned to Rancho Mirage, to get to know them, to ask the questions that are important to them, and to become familiar with exactly what is going on. When I was at coffee uh, the other day at, at this event, one gentleman came up to me and said, uh, what kind of a presentation is going to take place today? And I said, no, there isn't any presentation. The whole idea is for you to get together with those people that take care of us 24-7. And I just couldn't be more pleased and delighted with the, out, with the outpouring of support we had that day and every day. And with that, I'd like to invite Lieutenant Myers to the podium, if you will. Lieutenant Myers leads the sheriff uh, department that's assigned to Rancho Mirage. He is a friend of the city. He has been associated with our city for a long time. Uh, I almost want to say sergeant until I reflect back upon his promotion to lieutenant. We have a great history. I can't thank you enough and appreciate you being here and any comments that you have to make. Thank you. Well, you all t basically took my speech away by telling us what Coffee with the Cop is all about. <laughs> so a little, <laughs> a little back, <clears throat> excuse me, a little background. Coffee with the Cop was established in 2011 by two Hawthorne police officers. They did that with the purpose to be able to break down any bar barriers that may be between law enforcement and the community. Uh, they did it also to be able to effectively communicate um, any messaging with the community. So since then, um, this program has been incorporated uh, in our community uh, policing framework. Uh, it occurs across the United States now, in addition to 15 countries around the world. So it's been a very successful uh, program. Um, we attempt to do it quarterly uh, here in, in Rancho Mirage. Um, I, it's a great event. We uh, had a great time. Um, and I encourage members of the public to come out and visit, talk, ask questions. There would be a perfect opportunity. Also, they get to meet the deputies on a personal level that service their community. So it's really uh, it's a good event. Enjoy a free cup of coffee. And uh, we'd love to talk with everyone. Well, we really appreciate the fact that you, you're here. You know, we hear from time to time, um, gosh, I never see a, uh, a motorcycle or I never see a patrol car in my neighborhood. Right after we get those comments, I get an email from a very close personal friend 
that said, Ted, I wonder if you could help me. Uh, my wife got a ticket yesterday yeah. uh, going through a stop sign. And uh, we inquired where it was, and it happened to be in an area of Rancho Mirage that, frankly, uh, was being violated quite a bit. And as a result, uh, law enforcement was asked, could you please patrol this area even more? So the point is, we know how many uh, of, of you folks are out there, and you're out there regularly, because I see you regularly. So I just can't thank you enough for your participation and the fact that you communicate so well with our constituents. Yes. So again, Lieutenant, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, and we thank you guys for uh, the support uh, you give. And I, I will say with no doubt, does this city put the utmost importance on policing uh, in the community? And I too get those calls uh, when my traffic guys stop <laughs> the residents. So I know they are effective and I, I know they are out there doing their job. And uh, we appreciate your support for, for funding the police service to the city. Uh, it, it, it is uh, very, very uh, good. And I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Oh, thanks. It's a team effort. Yeah. Very good. My question is, burning question, who paid for the coffee? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I, I, yeah. I'm just teasing you. Yeah, I would, I I would, uh, three. I would uh, refer to the city manager for Very that. Very good. <laughs> now we, he has the big bucks. Go ahead. Yeah. No, we, uh, it's a valuable program, so we do allocate some budget for uh, those coffee with the cops. And then the coffee uh, locations that we select, we do rotate them uh, throughout the city, and uh, they do a great job of supporting the event as well. <laughs> Very good. Good yeah. report. Iris. I want to thank you also. Um, and I also want to mention to the viewers or listeners that um, if they do have problems in their area or if they have uh, any issues they'd like to discuss, they can always call your department. And I know that you've extended yourself on numerous occasions to uh, meet with homeowners in particular areas where they might have issues or they want a little bit extra protection. So I want to just remind people and to thank you also for all the time that you spend actually going out and meeting with our residents and, and letting them know that you're always available uh, yeah. to shake their hand, to give them advice, and to make sure they feel protected. Yes. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Ted? Uh, Mayor, I, uh, I was going to suggest uh, playing the video uh, just before the lieutenant came up here. Uh, but I got carried away with the <laughs> justifiable compliments. So if I could ask Jason to play the video now uh, of the coffee uh, session a week ago, if you would, Jason, please. I think it builds community relations between civilians and law enforcement. It's been so cool to watch. You get to see all these different groups of people, get to come together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they will. This is what we call coffee with a cop. What color was yours? It gives the community an opportunity to just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with deputy sheriffs. Firearms registration is kind of within that state. My name is Dave Morton. I'm a sergeant with the sheriff's department. And I've been specifically assigned to the Rancho Mirage Special Enforcement Team. We're here at Coffee with a K on 111 and Rancho Mirage. That's what we're here for. Build those community relationships in any way that uh, that works out. This event has been incredible for the Coffee Corporation. We love having the support from our sheriffs and showing them through a recorder. It also is an affirmation that the community is together, which is great. We were excited to come because my two-year-old loves police officers and police cars. This is a picture that Elvis uh, drew. These are the things that we hang at our, our desk and around the station to remind us that, you know, we have great support from the community. Thank you. You're welcome. We actually want to build, you know, friendships and relationships where the community feels like they can call us for anything. We like to do this every few months. We'll put it out on social media and we'll make sure that we update it as the time gets closer and when the next one's scheduled, show up and, and get to know us. Oh, thank you so much.
And again, Lieutenant, with all that's going on in the world, it's refreshing to be able to have the opportunity uh, for you to be here and to thank you today for all of your participation. Thank you, and we again thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, yes, this has been a pretty informative session this morning. So we now know where we might be able to win a year's worth of ice cream, and we now know that we can have coffee with a cop for free. So isn't this a great city? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that's just great. I have one short comment for my comment. Last uh, Friday, I had the honor and the privilege to uh, address the Palm Valley School graduating class. And um, this Palm Valley School has such great history uh, in the city of Rancho Mirage. Um, I remember it when the, we broke ground over there many, many years ago. And to see it come to where it is today, and the caliber of the kids that they turn out is just unbelievable. I was remiss because I was looking for my cap and gown and something gold to hang over me, but I, I never got it. But other than that, it's a, it's a, a great school, and uh, I know that we are very proud of Ranch Mirage to have the Palm Valley School in our neighborhood. So thank you. With that, I am done with the uh, council member comments. I will turn it to the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. I uh, just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge our uh, public works department and our uh, streets division for all their great work. Uh, this has been an extremely uh, difficult and historic year for Blow Sand, and uh, everyone can witness it when they drive our roadways here in the Coachella Valley. Uh, our crews have been uh, working over weekends and on holidays. Uh, and over time to get our roads cleared of the blow sand. Uh, and then it seems like in a matter of hours, it is right back where it was. Uh, but I do appreciate the efforts of our public works staff. And I just wanted to acknowledge all the work that they're putting in to try to keep up with the blow sand. Uh, as an example, this past weekend, we had to close uh, Bob Hope in front of the casino due to blow sand on the roadway. Um, and our public works crew over the holiday came in and uh, cleared that roadway in about uh, six hours. It was uh, 16 truckloads worth of dirt that had accumulated there on the roadway. Uh, so it was quite a significant amount of dirt from that storm that we experienced on Saturday and Saturday night through the night into Sunday morning or uh, Monday morning. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, tell the public works uh, crew, we appreciate you guys and recognize the hard work you're doing for our streets and keeping our uh, roadways safe and open. Thank you. Thank you. And next on the agenda is our consent calendar. And I'm going to turn it back to our city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, you have four items on the consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to approve the May 19th, 2022 regular city council meeting minutes. Item number two is to adopt resolution number 20. 22 next in order establishing the appropriations limit for fiscal year 22-23 in accordance with the provisions of division 9 of title 1 of the California government code commonly referred to as the GAN limit item number 3 are the approval of contracts uh, item number 4 are demands and uh, staff is here for any questions uh, before we go to council comments or questions, we will open up the uh, public comment period for the consent calendar. If any member of the public wishes to speak on one of these items, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would use the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone, and I'll turn this over to you, Christy. Okay, and I do not have any speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on the consent calendar? Seeing no one, and also no one on Zoom. Very good. Then it comes back to a call for council comments. Anybody have anything to say on these items? All right, with that, would you please vote? We need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Oh, we need a motion. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move approval of the consent calendar. I'll, I'll second. second that. All right, now we, now we can go for the vote. Thank you. 
Motion carries 5-0. Very good. Next is reports and information items, summer reading program announcements, and Valentine Hart is. There you are, Val. How you doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Val is our librarian, so. Yes. <laughs> Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council and City staff. My name is Valentin Kephart and I'm the Children's Librarian at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. I'm here today to tell you about our eight week summer reading club, act, uh, club and activities. <laughs> so this year, our program is called Journey Through Genres, where we'll be celebrating the joy of books and reading. We have designed our program with a focus of one genre each week. Some of the genres include graphic novels, fantasy and science fiction, sports, adventure, action, nonfiction, biographies, mystery, suspense, and finally fairy tales and tall tales. We were fortunate enough to receive funding again to our surprise and appreciation from the Brian and Patricia A. Herman Fund, who sponsored our summer reading club in years past. Without their generous support, we would not have been able to have all the listed programs. The Summer Reading Club begins next, next week on Monday, June 6th, and runs through Friday, July 29th. Everyone and anyone can participate in their Summer Reading Club, including newborns. Patrons will have an additional week to turn in any outstanding reading logs, with the raffle being drawn the week of August 8th. We are bringing back our weekly activities to the community room. Those will be on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. With no big shows this year's, we'll be focusing on arts and crafts and STEAM and STEM activities. During week one, we'll be focusing on our most popular genre, being the graphic novel. During the first week, our patrons will be able to hand draw their very own graphic novel, sh show off their sewing skills by making a sock monster, and last but not least, they'll be able to tie dye their own bandana using tissue paper. Just to name a few other activities, patrons will be able to design their own wooden coat of arms, make a Cheshire cat marionette, design an award for their favorite book, do a scavenger hunt across the library, and make a space mobile. Along with the activities we have for our young patrons, we'll be having teen activities for those who are currently attending middle and high school. We'll be holding two book discussion groups, one in June and July, the act but the activities begin on June 21st with Carlos Nieto, who will teach the teens how to draw anime. We'll be, on, on July 8th, they can come play Nintendo Switch games, such as Super Smash Bros, Rocket League, and board games. And finally, on July 22nd, excuse me, <clears throat> and on finally, on July 22nd, they'll be able to come and solve an escape room in a box by finding the antidote before they're turned into a werewolf. <laughs> and of course, I can't forget the most important part for all of the active teen activities, snacks will be provided. Our teen volunteers are of course coming back this summer, this summer to help us. They are a vital part of us of helping us make the summer reading club run. This year, we'll have 23 teens ranging from the ages of 12 to 17. Some of their duties include manning the summer registration table, daily programs where they help us count and help the kids do their arts and crafts, tidying materials in the children's room, shelf reading, and of course, helping us for any special products with the reference librarians and library assistants. We're very excited to see the number of teens who are willing to come back and help the library. I would be remiss not to mention what patrons are working or winning this summer our summer reading prizes. This year, we have done something a little different than we've done in the past years. As you can see, the staff came up with 27 different gift baskets that, have, that will be raffled off as our summer reading prizes. Patrons will have the ability to decide where they would like to place the raffle tickets that they've earned through their reading. These gift baskets are for all ages, and anyone can enter to win any of these wonderful prizes. Some, some examples are our classic movie night. So we got a few movies 
with popcorn and candy, Lego sets for all ages, because we all know we love Legos, treat yourself spa basket, the baby Yoda basket, the gardening basket, let's have a barbecue basket, including a mini grill, private stargazing for up to 20 uh, people, our favorite kids author a basket, so Mo Willems, Dave Pilkey, Eric Carl, and Jory John, two back-to-school backpacks full of school supplies, and my favorite basket, full of cookies and candy, and of course, many, many more that you can see on the image. Last night, we had our kickoff event with our summer reading club preview. We introduced our summer reading theme to our patrons and were able to, and were able to register early and start reading prior to the, start, to the official start of the summer reading club. We had 101 attendees who were able to register, and while they were there, they were able to also paint their favorite book cover, as you can see on the bottom left corner. So we got some great artists. <laughs> At the end of the evening, we had 93 registrations. By the time I left today, we were over 100, so over close to 120, so we're really excited that. So after two and a half years, it's exciting to see the library bustling with activity and people, and we are surely excited to see them back. We hope to see you there, and thank you so much. Hey, Con, Val, you did a great job. And I just want to say that we are so proud of Ranch Mirage of everything that you guys do, the staff over there, and that we are an award-winning library in the state of California, but I would say in the whole United States. But who am I? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Valentine, you've done an, another excellent job in putting this program together. How many summer right reading programs have we done? That I've done? Yeah. Uh, I believe this will be my seventh one. Each one gets better than the previous one, <laughs> and certainly the residents of the valley recognize that. So keep up the good work. Oh, thank you so much. Very good. Is that it? Very good, Val. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda is public hearings, and this is a con consolidated landscaping and lighting maintenance assessment, District Number 87-01 final engineer's annual levy report and levy of assessments, fiscal year 22-23. And I will turn this over to Justin Ruberg, street and fleet manager, to present the staff report. Thank you, honorable mayor, members of the city council. The item for you today is a consolidated landscape and lighting maintenance assessment district final engineer's annual levy report and levy of assessments for fiscal year 2022 23. The Landscape and Lighting Maintenance District is set up to maintain landscape and lighting in each specific zone, as shown in the engineer's report. The zones within the district are assessed on a cost recovery basis, assessing parcel owners for the associated maintenance cost of their each specific zone. The citywide landscape and lighting zone, which covers the city medians, is assessed to the parcel owners citywide. The five special benefit zones within the district are assessed only to the parcels receiving the district or the direct and special benefit as determined by the original agreement between the developer and the city. As required, a public hearing notice has been posted in the local newspaper noticing today's meeting. Staff recommends that the city council open the public hearing, invite testimony, and consider any written protest regarding the Consolidated Landscape and Lighting District 87-01. Staff recommends that the city council adopt both resolutions attached to the staff report and direct the city clerk to file certified copies of the resolutions with the appropriate agencies. This concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Justin. And I will turn it over to Chrissy to handle any public testimonies or comments. Thank you, Mayor. So if anyone from the public wants to provide uh, public testimony on this public hearing item, now is the time to do that. Anyone participating remotely would push star nine on their phone or raise hand on Zoom. I don't have any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? And give it a second. And there's no one on Zoom either. All right, with that, I will call for council comments if we have any. Anybody have anything? Okay. If not, I'll call for a motion. 
I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor, uh, that the City Council a, adopt resolution number 2022, next in order, approving the final engineer's annual levy report for the consolidated landscaping and lighting maintenance assessment district number 87-01 for fiscal year 2022-23. And B, adopt resolution number 2022, next in order, ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for the Consolidated Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District Number 87-01 for fiscal year 2022-23, and C, direct the City Clerk to file with the appropriate agencies certified copies of the above resolutions as may be required together with accompanying exhibits, attachments, and reports. I'll second that. Very good, we have a second. Could you please vote? Motion carries, 5-0. Mr. Mayor, uh, since we're getting ready to start the action calendar, uh, unless there's an objection from the council, uh, I was wondering if we could consider item number 11 uh, to start the action calendar. We do have the applicant for that commission here in the audience. So out of a courtesy, you can consider his item next so that he doesn't have to sit through the rather routine items that are before him. Are, are you saying we're boring? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it gets boring, yeah. Oh, all right, I get it. Now, did, did I have a motion and a second? I believe I did. Yeah, we, we voted on the public hearing, so we're good. Good. Uh, so uh, if we could move forward with item number 11. 11. On the agenda. All right, I'm going to, to 11. Appointment to the Mobile Home Fair Practice Commission. I'm going to turn this over to the city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. The public comments. Chrissy, it's all yours. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, the Rancho Mirage Mobile Home Fair Practices Commission includes one non-voting position that shall be held by a mobile home owner. This position was not filled when the City Council recently appointed commissioners to serve for the one-year term beginning June 1st, and any Council Member may make a nomination to this position. Council Member Smotrich is nominating Jay Wilson to serve on the Mobile Home Fair Practices Commission in the non-voting position that shall be held by a mobile home owner for the one-year term beginning June 1, 2022. A copy of Mr. Wilson's application was provided in your agenda packet, and this appointment may be confirmed with a majority vote of the City Council. That concludes my report. Um, now is the time for any public comments. If you are participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. And I do have one speaker card from the applicant, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to take a minute of your time. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm the president of the Colony Homeowners Association. Uh, many of you know that the colony is located in the 7,000 block of Gerald Ford. Uh, there's 220 units in that property and about 90% are full-time residents. Uh, the Mobile Home Fair Practices Commission has been very important to us and keeping that active uh, is has been critically important and being in the city of Rancho Mirage is, uh, is an honor. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to just thank you uh, for your support in uh, our ongoing efforts and to also thank uh, Jerry Berquist for having served in the position that I am seeking uh, for the past 16 years. And with that, I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, very good. Do we have any public comments, Chris? Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? And there is no one on Zoom either. Very good. Any comments from the council? All right, seeing none, then we will now call for that motion and that vote. I think we do okay. have uh, So we, we can vote. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I, I, wait, hang on a second. I need the motion again. Yes. Iris, would you please? I would love to. Okay, uh, I move that the City Council appoint Jay Wilson to serve as a non-voting member of the Rancho Mirage Mobile Home Fair Practices Commission for one year term beginning June 1st, 2022. Second. I will second it. And please vote. 
Motion carries 5-0. Very, okay. very good. And congratulations, and thank you for coming today and for all your kind words. Very good. Next in the action calendar, I'm going to turn this over to Justin Ruberg, Streets and Fleet Management, to present the staff report. Justin, you're on again. Thank you. Which item are we going back uh, so to? We're, so we're, we're going back to seven, uh, agenda item number seven, back to the top of the action calendar. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. This item before you today is the Park Maintenance District Special Tax Levy for fiscal year 22-23. In 1998, Rancho Mirage residents approved a special tax or special park tax to fund maintenance of Rancho Mirage City Parks. The park tax established the original levy amount of $18.96 and allowed for an annual adjustment limited to consumer price index, CPI, to keep pace with maintenance costs. The park tax is levied equally to each residential dwelling unit within the city, regardless of value. Commercial, recreational, and undeveloped land is levied according to the equivalent dwelling unit calculation as shown on page one of the resolution. The county levies the roll and collects the park tax on behalf of the city. The city receives park tax revenue from the county and records the revenue in the parkland fund, which is used exclusively for city parks. The current park tax is $32.94 per equivalent dwelling unit. As approved by the voters, the park tax can only be adjusted annually according to CPI. Staff is recommending that the city council adjust the park tax by $1.90 per equivalent dwelling unit to keep pace with CPI. The $1.90 tax increase will adjust park tax from $32.94 to $34.84 Staff is recommending that the City Council approve the attached resolution to adjust the 2223 park tax based on the CPI increase. This concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Justin. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chrissy. Okay, now's the time for any public comments. If you're participating remotely, pr please press star nine or raise hand on Zoom. I have no speaker cards, but is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one and no one on Zoom. Very good, thank you. Are there any council comments on this item? No. All right, seeing none, I will call for a motion. All right, Mayor, I'll make a motion that the City Council adopt resolution number 2022 next in order, ordering the levy and collection of the park maintenance special tax pursuant to ordinance number 685 for fiscal year 2022-2023 and B, direct the city clerk to file certified copies of the above resolution and accompanying exhibits, attachments, and reports with the appropriate agencies as required. I'll second. second. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Busy time for our city clerk. <laughs> <laughs> motion carries 5-0. Very good. Next item is item number eight. You, you realize you're getting overtime. Yeah. For this. Just remember that. He's All a right. manager. He's exempt. He doesn't get oh, overtime. Oh, is he exempt? Oh. We can work him as much as we want. Oh, you poor guy, poor guy. Well, I tried, Justin. Thank I you. tried. I appreciate that. <laughs> good. And uh, we're going to turn this over to Justin again for the certification of compliance for fiscal year 22-23 tax roll. Great. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor um, and members of the City Council. The County of Riverside administers the collection of taxes and assessments on behalf of the City of Ranch Mirage. The City will make adjustments to taxes and assessments within the City on an annual basis. The adjustments made by the City to taxes and assessments are submitted to the County for inclusion on the tax roll. The City submits a Certificate of Compliance to the County listing the districts and funds that the City maintains. The Certificate of Compliance serves as a mechanism to formally establish compliance with Proposition 218. City staff recommends that the City Council authorize the City Manager or his designee to execute and submit to the County a Certificate of Compliance with Proposition 218. This concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Uh, Chris, he turn it over to you. Okay, this is the time for any public comments. If you're participating remotely, you would press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. 
Anyone in the audience? Uh, there's no speaker cards. Would anyone in the audience like to speak on this item? Seeing no one and no one on Zoom. Very good. I'll turn it back to the council. Any comments? Mr. Mayor, I have one question. Yes, sir. Justin, this, this is uh, on page 8-2. And this has a question regarding the Dell Webb project bonds. Are those all individually billed to the homeowner, or how is that taken care of? I, I can answer that for you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, so uh, those CFD bonds are only allocated to those homeowners because they paid for the improvements for those homes specifically. And so that project was broken up into three phases uh, from an assessment district standpoint. And that's why you see an A, a B, and a C. So there are specific parcels for each one of those areas with specific debt that that assessment pays for. So essentially the homeowners uh, in those areas are paying for the improvements uh, that were necessary to build uh, their community. Okay, so in the future, as we develop more property over Del Webb, uh, will we have more additional CFDs? Uh, no, so the, there's only uh, three CFDs uh, for this project. There were only three service areas. Okay. So there will uh, be no additional Del Webb uh, assessment bonds. Okay, thank you. Good. Are there any more council comments on this item? Anybody? Nope. Seeing none, I am going to call for the motion. I'll take care of it. That the, I'm, Thank I'm, you, I move that the city council authorize the city manager or his designee to execute the necessary certificates of compliance and or other documents as may be required for each fixed charge district to be submitted for levying and collection on the fiscal year 2022-2023 tax roll. I'll second that. Very good, I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Very good, it has passed. Moving on to number nine, which is the annual levy of special taxes and assessments for fire protection and prevention and Community Facilities Districts number 1 and 2, and Kofi Atabam will take care of this. Thank you, Mayor <clears throat> and Council. So just like Justin has already um, presented, annually various assessments uh, must be confirmed by the City Council and then submitted to the Riverside County Tax Collector's Office to be included in the annual tax roll. The three resolutions attached to item, agenda item number 9 would approve special assessments to fund public safety, that is police and fire and library services. The fire tax and fire exercise special assessments are $60 and $13.66 per dwelling unit respectively. Due to Prop 218 restrictions, these assessments remain the same fiscal year over fiscal year. The CFD number one, which is for police and fire, Assessment is determined by a mathematical formula that was established by the enabling ordinance, ordinance number 485. That formula looks at actual expenses and revenues generated um, for public safety and comes up with a net cost that is then apportioned out among the various parcels. For the fiscal year 2022-2023 assessment for residential units um, is proposed to be levied at $357.78. The commercial rate, which is based on a square footage rather than um, a unit basis, is proposed to be levied at 96 cents. For CFD number two, which is the Western Vacation Club, this was established in 2001 to fund library services. And this assessment is subject to annual increases um, to reflect a change in the consumer price index for the Riverside, San Bernardino, and Ontario area. The CPI change was 8.59%. Therefore, the rate for CFD number two will increase from the current $39.74 to $43.16 per assessable week. Staff recommends approval of the attached resolutions which will then be forwarded to the county assessor's office for placement on the 2022-2023 tax roll. 
That concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Kofi. I appreciate that. Chrissy? Yes, now is the time for any public comments. Anyone participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or the raise hand button on Zoom. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one, and there's no one on Zoom. Very good, any council comments on this item? All right, seeing none, I will make the motion that the city council adopt a resolution number 2022 next in order, ordering the levy and collection of the fire tax and fire excise tax pursuant to ordinance number 190 and ordinance number 475 for fiscal year 2223B, resolution number 22 next in order, establishing and ordering the levy and collection of the annual special tax pursuant to ordinance number 4854, community facilities, district number one, police and fire service, and annexation there to for fiscal year 2023 and C. Resolution number 22, next in order, establishing and ordering the levy and collection of the annual special tax pursuant to ordinance number 767 for community facilities district number two, Weston Vacation Club and annexations there to, to fiscal year 2223. Second. 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 Very good. All in favor, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Very good. Now we're moving down to number 10, which is fiscal year 2022-23 budget. And I am turning this over to Joseph Carpenter, Senior Manager, Finance and Human Resources, to present our staff report. So, Mr. Mayor, before I hand it over to um, Joseph, yeah. I just want to say a big thank you to our city manager for his leadership and guidance in this budget process. It's always a lot of work, but um, his leadership has been steady in getting us here. So I just want to say a big thank you to him, as well as all the directors and the budget liaisons from the various departments. They've put in a lot of work to get us where we, we are today. So I just want to say a big thank you. And then to Joseph, He's put in a lot of hours, <laughs> a lot of hours to get us here. So thank you. And then, Joseph, you can take over the presentation. Very, very good. No raises, no raises, but pretty good. Okay. Recognition is worth the raise. So there. <laughs> All right, Joseph, you're on. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Today's presentation will provide a summary of the fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund budget. Details on all the proposed changes to the tentatively approved budget for all funds can be found on pages 10-37 through 10-39 of the staff report. City Council tentatively approved, subject to review, the fiscal year 22-23 budget on June 3, 2021, currently outlined in green on your screen. At the direction of the city manager, the finance division started an analysis of the amounts budgeted for revenues and expenditures for all city funds. This analysis was then thoroughly reviewed by the city manager and his executive management team. As detailed in the staff report and its attachments, several revenue and expenditure adjustments are proposed, which will increase the projected total surplus approximately $3.2 million. These adjustments were discussed in detail with the fiscal year 22-23 budget subcommittee, which consists of Mayor Pro Tem Kite and Councilmember Weil on May 10, 2022. As proposed, the fiscal year 22-23 budget projects a general fund operating surplus of approximately $1.2 million and a non-operating or capital surplus of $40,000 for a total surplus of $1.2 million. The next two slides in this presentation will provide an overview of the general fund operating revenues and expenditures. The general fund's 30 plus operating revenue sources have been grouped into the major categories shown on the pie chart displayed on your screen. Staff is proposing to increase general fund operating revenue approximately $1.9 million or 6.58%. Comprising approximately 16 million of the $31 million general fund operating revenue budget, transient occupancy tax, also known as TOT or bed tax, and sales tax, shown in yellow and blue on this pie chart, make up approximately 52% of general fund operating revenues. 
Staff is proposing an increase of approximately 6.74% or $1 million to these two revenue sources. These increases are based on revised data from the city's sales tax consultant and the anticipated opening of Sensai Porcupine Creek in November 2022. Staff is also proposing adjustments of approximately $902,000 to the other operating revenue accounts. Significant adjustments include about $560,000 in additional revenue from the CFD number one transfer, the result of increased development, $250,000 in leaseback revenue due to the extension of the spa suites lease at the Ritz-Carlton Rancho Mirage, and $150,000 for speaker series ticket sales. Staff is proposing to increase general fund operating expenditures approximately $1.2 million or 4.15%. Approximately 42% or $12.5 million of the general fund operating expenditure budget is dedicated to public safety. Staff is proposing increases, which are the red arrows, or decreases, the green arrows, for each functional area as displayed on your screen. Public safety has proposed to decrease approximately $129,000 as the transfer to the fire fund, which has been reduced due to increased revenue in CFD number one. It should be noted projected increases for police and fire were already programmed into the budget, therefore staff is not proposing a change. Special programs is proposed to increase $475,000, $350,000 of which is the speaker series, Please note that expense is partially offset by revenue from ticket sales. Staff is requesting to increase non-departmental expenditures, approximately $128,000, to account for increases in the city's general liability insurance. Administrative services is proposed to increase approximately $471,000. Most of this increase can be attributed to additional information technology infrastructure and network security. Details on all the proposed adjustments can be found on pages 10-3 and 10-4 of the staff report. At the end of fiscal year 2020-2021, the most recent audited fiscal year, the city had approximately $62.3 million in its reserves. Staff estimates the city will need to utilize about $2.5 million in reserves during the current fiscal year, leaving an estimated $59.8 million in reserves to start fiscal year 22-23. As was discussed earlier in this presentation, it is estimated the city's general fund will experience a surplus of approximately $1.2 million in fiscal year 22-23. This surplus will replenish unassigned fund balance, money that hasn't been committed for specific use and is available for any purpose. Funds in the city's remaining six reserve accounts have a specific commitment and can only be used for that purpose unless changed by the city council. The prudent reserve is set aside for future revenue shortfalls caused by economic conditions. The capital improvement reserve is for land, equipment replacement, information technology equipment and software, and facility and infrastructure renovation and upgrades. The disaster recovery reserve is set aside to cover costs and losses associated with a major natural disaster that requires activation of the city's emergency operating center. The economic development reserve is to be used to continue the city's economic development efforts. The public safety reserve was created for police, fire and medical equipment capital needs that may arise in the future. And lastly, the library reserve is set aside for the future needs of the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and consideration this afternoon. Staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Joseph. Chris, here, turn it over to you for public comments. Thank you. Now's the time for public comments. If you are participating remotely, please press star nine on your phone or raise hand on Zoom. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to comment? Seeing none and no one on Zoom. Very good, thank you. Council comments. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. If you just take a minute, I, I think uh, we had two individuals working with us on putting this budget together, Joseph and Kofi. They both did an outstanding job. Ted and I worked with them very closely, and I think we came out with one of the better budgets that we've had over the last few years. So thank you to Kofi and Joseph. Did a great job and to my partner in budgeting, Ted. He also hung in there. Thank you, Mayor. 
Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I'll echo, no, echo that. Uh, uh, it, it was a pleasure working with the Mayor Pro Tem on this project. Uh, I want to thank uh, Joseph and Kofi for the excellent job they did. It's also very uh, encouraging and rewarding to see the recovery uh, and increase in both our TOT and sales tax revenue, uh, which accounts for increasing the budget in those areas. Uh, and I think it portends uh, possibly uh, what the future holds. Um, as Tom Scaramolino said earlier today, they had a record-setting uh, period. I know that the Ritz, likewise, from a both an occupancy standpoint and a rate standpoint, uh, are hitting all-time highs. So, again, it's very encouraging, and thanks to both of you for the work you've done. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. I will now call for a motion. All right, I'll be happy to make that motion. Thank you, Ted. Uh, that the City Council of Rancho Mirage and the Board of Directors for the City of Rancho Mirage Housing Authority, Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory, and City of Rancho Mirage Community Services District adopt the resolutions identified as resolutions A through G. A. Resolution number 2022, next in order, approving and adopting the city's fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. Council Deep. member, uh, council member, you don't have to read all of them if you don't want to. Great, great. <laughs> uh, I would there, be, there I, I would be, I would be delighted to shortchange that. <laughs> Why don't I merely make uh, reference to the fact that uh, we are recommending the adoption uh, of resolutions A through G uh, as per the, um, uh, the recommendation. Is there a second? Second the motion. Please vote. <laughs> motion carries 5-0. City manager saved uh, council member. Boy, did, did, yes. did he ever. I was thinking about just letting him go just to see how he did. <laughs> I, I was ready. <laughs> and next year, we'll let you do the whole thing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. That, that was really cute. All right. Next on the agenda, we took care of number 11. So number 12 is up on the docket. And Rancho Mirage General Municipal Election and I'm going to turn this over to Chrissy, our city clerk, to present the staff report and handle public comments also. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. A general municipal election needs to be called as the terms for three of the five Rancho Mirage City Council Members expire in November of 2022. Pursuant to Ordinance Number 1183, the city's general municipal elections shall be held on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November of each even-numbered year to coincide with the statewide general election. Proposed Resolution A calls and provides notice of an election to be held on Tuesday, November 8, 2022. The Riverside County Registrar of Voters Office provides election services for most cities in the county, including Rancho Mirage. The city's fiscal year 22-23 budget set aside $50,000 for the cost of the registrar's services for the 2022 election. Proposed Resolution B requests that the County Board of Supervisors authorizes the Registrar's Office to provide these services. Each candidate for City Council has the opportunity to prepare and submit a candidate statement to be included in the Voter Information Guide in accordance with California Elections Code regulations. Proposed Resolution C outlines these regulations and provides that the City will pay for the cost of printing a candidate's statement. I re recommend that you adopt the three resolutions listed as A, B, and C in the staff report, and I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You can turn and I think public. I'll go ahead and do public comments. Thank you. So if you're participating remotely, now's the time. Sorry. If you're participating remotely, please press star nine or raise hand on Zoom. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Seeing none and seeing no one on Zoom. Very good, and with that, I will turn it over to council comments. Anybody have any? 
All right, then I'm going to call for the motion and I will read it, seeing that it has to do with the mayor. That the City Council adopt a resolution number 2022 next in order, calling and providing notice of a general municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, for the election of three Rancho Mirage Council members for three full four year terms. B. Resolution number 2022 next in order requesting the Riverside County Board of Supervisors permit the Riverside County Register of Voters to render specific services to the city of Ranch Mirage for the city's general municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November 8th, 2022 and C. Resolution number 2022 next in order adopting Regulation C candidates for election office pertaining to materials submitted to the voters for the general municipal election to be held on Tuesday, November the 8th, 2022. I'll second that. Very good. We have a motion second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Next, we are going to closed session. And I'm going to turn this over to our illustrious city attorney, Mr. Quintanilla. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city council and its affiliated boards are now going to recess in a closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D2 regarding two anticipated litigation items. Pursuant to the Brown Act, I have to disclose the facts and circumstances as to why these are anticipated litigation items. The first has to do with an ordinance that is no longer in effect since our general election was moved to November of even years. And the second item has to, um, pertains to a former resident of a former mobile home park within the city. The second item is a um, involves public employee performance evaluation, the city manager, executive director, and that's pursuant to California Government Code Section 54957. So those are the items we are going to consider in closed session, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then with that, we will now adjourn into closed session, and it is 2.35. Okay, it is uh, 420 and the City Council took no reportable action in a closed session. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.